Rust. It's the most loved programming language and is growing rapidly and spreading across the tech world as a next generation programming language. Promising memory safety while still maintaining the speed of C or C++. That sounds pretty cool and learning Rust will probably allow me to write programs without having to worry too much about dumb memory bugs. I, it will also hopefully guarantee me a good job in the future. I hope. Assuming AI has to take over every job with GPT-5 and the singularity. Alright, that's getting a little sidetracked, but I think the best way to learn Rust is through a project. And I like programming video games, so I thought it would be a little bit of fun learning how to program a game with Rust. I already had experimented with Rust for the past year, so I decided that I was comfortable enough to experiment with the Rust bindings for SDL to create my game. Additionally, I had also become really interested in Mode 7 graphics from the SNES era, and I thought it would be fun to create a basic racing game with Rust using the graphics techniques from Mode 7. And, well, I want to make a game similar to the legendary F-Zero style racing games from the SNES era, I thought that would be fun to program in Rust. Of course, if I tried integrating the art of a certain Italian plumber racing kart game into my game, I have a feeling that Nintendo would probably attempt to sue me into the Stone Age, or at least I don't want to take that risk, which is why I decided to instead go with the main character of this game being Ferris the Crab, and since this game is written in Rust, it feels quite fitting for the mascot, or at least the main character of the game to be uh, Ferris. I'm not going to go into huge detail on how Mode 7 works, but here are the rough details. Firstly, the camera has two important parameters, Z near and Z far, which represent how far the camera can see. For each pixel, we calculate the depth is at. This is a value between 0 and 1, where 0 is the horizon and 1 is the bottom of the screen. Of course, stuff near the horizon is farther than the stuff near the bottom of the screen, intuitively. Therefore, this equation allows us to figure out the z-coordinate of the pixel in world space. The x-coordinate is calculated by first calculating the near x values and the far x values, and then linearly interpolating between the two to figure out where the leftmost x-coordinate and the rightmost x-coordinate are for the row of pixels that we are drawing. We then can linearly interpolate between these values again to get our x-coordinate for the specific pixel that we are going to draw on the screen. Finally, after all of that, we can apply appropriate transformations to these coordinates such as the camera rotation and the camera position to allow the view to be rotated and moved around, and then we sample from the image data to figure out what the pixels should be that we're trying to draw there. It's color, you know, whether it's road or grass, and for sprites, we can just do similar calculations, except we already know the position of the sprite in world space, so instead we just apply the operations I described above in reverse to get this uh, position in screen space instead. Alright, gameplay is pretty simple. Whoever reaches four laps first wins. You have to avoid the ghosts as you race around the track, and you also should collect power-ups that are scattered around the track as well. There are three types of power-ups. Speed boost, which increases your speed, of course. A banana, which adds an obstacle to the track. And a fireball that basically just targets your opponent and knocks him out. Avoid going onto the grass as that slows you down. There are speed boosts that give you a huge boost in your speed if you go over them as well. Alright, I like Rust as a language. There's a lot of good tutorials on the internet, such as the Rust book, and each library seems to have pretty good documentation, which made utilizing those libraries pretty painless, and I didn't have to worry about stupid memory bugs that I might have introduced, as Rust made me think over my code and make sure I didn't make any mistakes, and if I did make any mistakes, the compiler just refused to compile my code, and I had to make sure to check it at compile time, which made things a little bit, well, easier. Also, Cargo made it really easy to add and manage the libraries, which was something I did not realize I was missing out when I was working with C and C++, which was pretty cool. I think I will probably be using Rust in some future projects or games. Alright, source code will be posted. Uh, do note that it's more spaghetti than Italian restaurant due to this being my first major Rust project, but, ah uh, well. Anyway, have a good day.